you're watching the 5 Minute Bark Podcast on YouTube. If you like this episode, you just may like many more. Subscribe today by clicking the red subscribe button in the top right hand corner. And we're live here today on the 5 Minute Bark. We're so excited to have a next guest on the show here today. We've got Andy Nilo here today. He's got an amazing skincare company called Alatura. I had to say it 10 times before we recorded here today, but I think I got it right. Andy, did I get that right? You did. All right. Awesome. And also a special shout shout out to uh, Nicholas um, for inviting um, Andy on the show here today. He says he's an amazing uh, guest and we're going to share a lot with him today. But um, Andy basically... um, do what most of us want to do when we really want to change our lives and make things happen. He uh, created his own company with a big purpose, and I'm going to have him share a little bit about that here today, uh, about Alatura and how it came across. Andy, share that with us, everybody, here today. Hey, Dennis, thank you so much for having me. I, I love doing these podcasts because it's, you know, every time I, I, I do one, it's just like a stroll down memory lane that I don't really have a chance to do because I'm just constantly staying in the moment and, and worried about, a, <clears throat> not worried about, but uh, striving towards achieving what's next for the company, for, for myself, family, friends, things like that. So um, uh, I, I rarely, well, I mean, the only time I get a chance to, to kind of sit down and rehash where uh, where this company and, and this whole uh, business has been built from. And and that's, uh, that's the accident that I was in five years ago that I was uh, mentioning to you that I was hit and run over by two vehicles on Melrose. Um, on a Saturday night, just uh, westbound heading Tundra hit, hit me into the eastbound lane and uh, Land Rover ran over me and uh, shattered my job. I woke up in Cedar sinai ICU with bone exposed. My chin was going through the bottom of my, uh, my mouth. And, um, you know, it was just, I was just told to, uh, just to not talk, to not, you know, because they wanted to piece those particles back together. So I got two titanium plates inserted, one up top and then one, beno- uh, one uh, beneath my uh, – on the lower end just to help that the bone grow in smoothly. And then, uh, I actually eight months after the accident, I got those removed because the bone had fully grown back and, and I didn't want to have the titanium that close to uh, my brain. So I just, yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I went home, I was really banged up and I was unrecognizable. I mean, my chin was out to here. I, I severed a nerve right here that, um, that, uh, holds communication from the brain to the, the facial muscles on the side of your face. And I would smile and this side would light up, but this side was just kind of dead. And I was told that, um, you know, if you know, it was, it was all numb. Like I would cut myself shaving. I can barely feel this, this on my lip right here. I still can't feel this side. Like I can pinch it as hard as I can. I still can't feel it, but that's okay. I mean, but the thing is I'm starting to get feeling back on this, in this area, but for a couple of years, I didn't even have anything. And then towards the end of the second year, I started to get a little fuzziness back, which is really uh, encouraging. And I'm, I'm starting, you know, we're a little over five years. The accident was March 20, 2011. So, um, yeah, five and a half years, a little over. And uh, just super grateful. You know, I mean, it's uh, you hear, time, you know, not time and time again, but often you hear sometimes these accidents can lead it to something positive. And that's all I, I, I took from it from the beginning is – is that because people don't survive accidents like that. It was actually really in a weird way. I wouldn't say exciting, but I was extremely lucky to be alive. I mean, in a situation like that, I had seven broken ribs, collapsed lung, catheter, chest tube inserted, couldn't talk. I mean, I was everything but, um, you know, um, alive, <laughs> uh, well, well, alive, but everything but, uh, being dead. I mean, I was, I was definitely, a rock bottom so to speak so i mean i had nowhere else uh but to go up from there and i i took i had nothing but time i mean i didn't want to leave the house i, I went to whole new grocery stores i was unrecognizable people would look you in the eyes and then look directly down because you kind of had this i mean it was just a misshaped misformed uh face head uh, i mean i was just and plus my confidence was at the bottom at, uh, at the lowest it's ever been so you know, people that, that knew me from before, uh, and then, you know, now they saw, it was just really, uh, uh, it was, it was hard. It was hard, but let's talk about that confidence thing, because actually that's one of the big subjects I'm going into 2017 with is confidence and, you know, success really comes from confidence. 
I mean, the, the root of success is confidence, you know, confidence in meeting that beautiful woman, meeting that next business partner. Uh, it's all in what you say and what you do and what you project. And that's all about confidence. And you had to go from no confidence back to, I would assume, a great level of confidence now. Um, explain the difference of how you, one, dealt with, you know, you were probably confident before and lost it all because your life was changed and then you had to rebuild it. How, I mean, that's a, yeah, mass, that's a massive it. share. So, yeah, I would, I would say this. So I, I, it's, it's a tough, it's like a chicken and the egg type thing. Like which one came first as far as confidence and success. I personally, you know, I just take it back to my, my athlete days playing baseball and I had, you know, I had to build that confidence, but I, that confidence and that, uh, re, uh re, like, um, I had anxiety, you know, personally on the baseball field, athletically, everything. But I defeated that through, achieving confidence through success that I work towards. I, I put in the work mentally, physically, daily that made me feel better about myself and ultimately uh, led to knocking down those goals. And then that builds that, for me personally, something that I just, I achieved and I built and I worked towards that. I set goals out and I knocked them down. That's what built my confidence. Um, so I wouldn't really say, I mean, that success leads to confidence. I mean, work ethic for me, and that that diligent, I mean, those my the uh, meditation, those those goals that I set, that constantly tricking my my mind in, into believing myself, and then ultimately knocking down that goal. You're like, oh shit, like I just did it, and then that's something that leads to that personal momentum that just starts that little snowball. It turns into an avalanche of of confidence. So I uh, after after the accident, that's all I had is I I, can, I got this. You know, it was tough, sure, but I I knew. Uh, I mean, it was never one bit that I, I just knew I could, I, I was just trying to find a way, the best way to recover, po uh, the best uh, and quickest way possible. Um, all I had was my comp. Now it was, maybe it was a, uh, self, what's a, uh, self-conscious thing. It was a self-conscious thing. I would never say my confidence was rock because I knew my mind, uh, I just, I'm a very, um, you know, a, a lot of self-belief. So I just didn't, I knew that wasn't ever, that never wavered once. Um, so I was just from that, that point on, I was just trying to, to put together a list and the best formula to recover quickest. And then that was going to lead, you know, in, in a race, uh, you know, I just, I just did little, I tricked my mind to get over the little self-conscious things as far as my jaw going out in public. It was tough. Sure. But there are ways to defeat that. You just, you, you know, little mantras that I would say to myself, look, I'm alive. Who cares what they think? Right. Um, things like that. Uh, but I never did I wallow cause you, I just, I've never been that guy. And uh, even as, as low as I've been, um, it's just um, I was very grateful to be alive. I had an amazing uh, level of perspective. You can imagine from uh, surviving something like that. I had a lot of love for my family and friends that I'll never forget. And I just I just worked. I knew I was. It was the same recipe of how I've achieved anything else in life, and that's discipline, routine, work ethic, and then uh, staying consistent with that. And uh, never once did that waver, and that's that's what got me back uh, to where I was before. So. So yeah. hard, hard work and uh, achieving goals then leads to confidence. Oh, yeah. I mean, in, okay. in my opinion, that's, that's my little recipe. I mean, I set goals, make them high. Yep. I work my absolute ass off with the fear of somebody else outworking me. I just do little things. I, I play mind games all the time. That works. That's just what I do. I, I set goals, write them down. You know, words, writing stuff down has amazing power to them. And what, I mean, whatever it is, and then that's just, you knock that down. It makes you feel good because you work towards it. You didn't ask anybody for help and you, you earned it. That, that's something that sticks with you. I mean, I can only speak for myself. Everyone's differently, but everyone's different, excuse me. But man, that, that stuff, I mean, I remember stuff when I was 14, 15 years old, making the junior Olympic team, making team California. It's like that, that's what build that little kid into a wow. That, that took that, that little te early teenager into wow, I can actually do this because there's so much negative talk with, uh, with people shooting towards their dreams nowadays, whether it's athletically, professionally, whatever, you know, I just, I, I've experienced time and time again that we can really achieve anything that you lock in and put your mind to, but you really, you gotta, I mean, if you work, you have to work out of this world hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's gotta touch everything inside you with what you put into it, but I'm telling you, if you do, I mean, there's, I just, I, I believe limit. You, you know, any, limit. Any, anything. Yeah. So let's talk about that writing down. I heard the writing down the goals. I mean, because that's, you know, something I've always done when I was, I mean, I've been a Tony Robbins fan. I've been in his, I've been in his videos yeah. and stuff like that. I've been to his, his conferences and right. I know all his people and stuff like that. But, um, you know, one thing I have never, I mean, I've been successful in many, I've been a professional athlete and different things like that, but 
you're right. Writing down the goals, I think, is something people need to take away from today is literally writing them down. So yeah. do you actually just use a yellow, you know, yellow line piece of paper? Do you have a yeah. journal? Do you have a, a, a Bible? What do, you, what, do you, what do you write your no, stuff down in? I was looking in? for it. it I've, it's just, yeah, it's just a little... Uh, a pocket pocket size thing no or? but it's about eight eight by ten just so i can write a little bit ah oh, they're around here too i actually people told me to start writing right after my accident because my mind was everywhere but it was good to put it on paper because i definitely right. want to write uh just uh, i want to write something about my recovery because it was it was a, a lot it was of course it, of course uh, it, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting but um but yeah no i mean i would just do one of those uh you know composition books just write it down whatever's on your head bullet points just just to knock stuff down for that day yep. um i didn't used to do that but I, I just i i've experienced the the power of writing stuff down i mean there, there's there's something to it of physically taking pen to to paper and and and, and you know writing bullet points out uh goals that you want to do there's something about it about yep. writing stuff down because it's uh you know our, our thoughts my thoughts are everywhere all the time but writing stuff down and being a little bit more organized with that has helped but maybe it's, you know, I, I've had this conversation with a, uh, a, I don't know if you know Alex Sharfrin. If you don't look him up after this, um, this podcast. But I was really trying because I've always been a type it, type it out, not a write it out person. Oh. You know, and um, I mean, like you know, I'm just, I'm not feeling it with the the, the write it out, uh, the type it out, and I my handwriting is so bad. I've always wanted to write it out and so type it out. It's so bad, and um, he's like Dennis, you know, <clears throat> the writing out um, because you're using so many different muscles. And the time that it takes to do it, you get to see it actually happen. Uh, um, there's more to that versus the like, for example, for, okay, for example, yeah. for example, the audio book versus the reading the book. The reading the book, you you can't listen to our music and read to the book. You can listen to the audio book, and yet you know you can sweep your yard, or you can clean your house, or you can drive your car. So you're not really fully uh, um, in the moment with with the right. content. So the writing down and the reading um, are what make the difference between you know achieving higher success. Now oh, that's a good point, especially on the reading part. I, you know, it's, it's, I'm an audio book guy and, and you know, yeah, so am I. I mean, <laughs> I, I'd like to be more of a, you know, physical reader, but man, it's tough for me. <laughs> it's so tough for me yeah, too. Take, uh, yeah. And, um, you know, I'm just gonna have to do it cause I'm going to have to, you know, you, he's right. It's like, you only can read those words. So plus my reading isn't all that great anyway. So I get to learn how to read better. Sure. So uh, I mean, me I, too. I practically dropped out of high school to, to travel the world, but, um, Awesome. So tell us about um, Alatura. Did I say it right? You did. All you right. Did. <laughs> nice. yeah, Alatura. So it's, it's Latin for feeding, nourishing. Uh, I mean, it's just your skin is your largest organ. So you just want to, I mean, I just felt like it, my body, uh, my skin, I mean, I had a lot of abrasions and scarring after my accident. I just felt I was going to recover quickest through just a, a meal that is a food grade, uh, nutrient dense, you know, antioxidant rich meal that I would stay extremely consistent with every day. I mean, I had different little things that I was going to do, whether it was accelerating, uh, the healing by, uh, subtle exfoliation and then hitting it with certain ingredients, superfoods, antioxidants, and then getting really, uh, dense with the richness of like, say Manuka honey, colostrum as a post, uh, mask. I, I created this mask that's primarily clays. It has four different clays, but then it has superfoods like, uh, colostrum, pearl powder, American ginseng, vitamin C. I mean, it's just, um, it's, uh, it's it, what it does. It lightly exfoliates and it escorts the micronutrients back into the dermis, but it helps remove the impurities that I was getting. I was, uh, just absorbing through the CT scans and x-rays and antibiotics that I was taking to help, uh, make sure that there was no infection. It was an internal surgery on this jaw. So I had to take those antibiotics and it was just so draining. I was like a zombie just walking around and and I hated that. So I would do this morning uh, tonic of Chinese and adaptogenic herbs and, and immune system strengthening mushrooms and just so many different amino acids right, and let, things. Like let me stop you right here because yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to see this. Like, so I'm just seeing this dude. All right, this dude just got in an accident and he, you know, he's got to re, he's got to repair his skin. And I mean, you don't read, you listen to audio books. How did you come up with all this? These, I mean, this chemicals or this this uh recipe this Not magic chemical. potion <laughs> yeah I, well you know i'm from yeah. the east coast we used we call it all the same thing but you know this this potion this magic potion to clean up and fix your skin i mean i mean where do you start to do all the research and where do you i mean do you just grab some ginger and start banging it in like a piece of wood oh. and start squishing it and putting it on your face i mean tell me about that how, tell yeah. us how this all happened so i had bad skin in college and the only thing 
it was because of the products that I was using. I was using Clearasil, Neutrogena, Clean and Clear, all the, like, the very heavily marketed uh, skincare products that I thought were good for me. But it turns out they were extremely toxic and, and caused a ton of irritation, excess drying in my skin. It just, it just constantly adds some type of redness or uh, pimples, it, something like that. And the only way that I was able, over time, you know, it's the worst thing. You know, it's the first thing you see. It sets the tone for your day. If you have some type of redness or irritation, pimple or anything like that. And so it just bugged me. It, it was really, really hard for me. So I, the only thing that worked was this clay mask. Uh, over the summer, back home in Palo Alto, I bought this little one ingredient uh, bentonite clay mask. And I had been doing that uh, once a week. It just brought so much circulation to the surface of the skin. It helped remove those impurities, that congestion around the eye area. It just helped the blood flow. And it helped uh, give me a nice, uh, but also cleaning out the pores and the clogging of the oils and just things like that, dirt. And, and it really was an amazing cleanser as well as a uh, detoxifying agent and, and just really overall uh, facial treatment that I would do once a week. Uh, but so that led to, it was just bentonite, calcium bentonite clay. But then I started doing more and more research on different clays like Rasul, pyrophyllite, kaolin, uh, eyelite, um, uh, what's that other one? Uh, diatomaceous earth, um, Multani midi, uh, pink rose clay. I mean, there's, there's so many different, and I would just buy them all. And it was just, it was my own little creation out of, I mean, this was years before my accident that I was, I was just, it was just, uh, I've always been passionate about it because something that could turn your, your, turn my uh, appearance around that quickly, it would just eat up anything. If I had anything around my face, it would just boom, pull out that infection. That's what zits are, uh, basically is a, is a little bacterial infection. It would just pull out any type of irritation there, smooth it out. And I just started, I was unbelievable to me because I finally beat what was bringing me down, which was, uh, the zits. And, and so I would, I would stay consistent with that. Uh, ever since I was about 23 and then it, I would go to the site and buy a uh, bentonite in bulk, but they had other clays. And so I just started to buy those other clays, like I said, and, and combine them together. It was just, nothing was precise. And I kind of, I would study spa treatments and, and that's how I got my, uh, my, um, uh, organic kelp powder, which is essentially an algae, a blue green algae. And it was just so, um, antioxidant rich, vitamin A, C, K, B12, sodium alginate, uh, chlorophyll. I mean, it's just loaded with incredible stuff for the dermis. It doesn't smell that great, but it's a, it's very good for your skin. So yeah, I mean, that's it. I would just do my own research. I would study spa treatments and and I would put things together. But the big thing is, uh, so I had that mask going into it, but the big kickers towards the end was a friend of mine put a jar of colostrum on my uh, hospital bed table or whatever. He's like, dude, just put this, mix it together with Manuka honey, put a little paste on it. So I was doing that on my, on my scar. And then also I was putting it, I decided to put it in my mask. Boom. That's like one of my central ingredients in my mask. I mean, it's just loaded growth factors, IGF one, super healing, just, uh, it's just incredibly, uh, nutrient rich and, and your, your, your skin, which is your largest organ that I really feel like that freshly exfoliated area needs those growth factors and antioxidants and really good minerals to help regenerate cell turnover and or accelerate cell, cell turnover and regenerate the whole dermis and give you a nice bright and, um, uh, fresh, uh, radiant, uh, uh, you know, skin. So, I mean, it was just, it was something that I, I was experiencing. I, I just got addicted to it because it, it, I was fine tuning it. And the same people who saw me in the ICU were like, what, what do you, what'd you do to your skin? They couldn't, it, all the abrasions were gone and the scarring had been significant, significantly reduced and the swelling had gone down. So I just, uh, that's a long story short, but yeah, I mean, a year later I started really started testing with friends and, and uh, a, a med spa brought it in to their practice as one of their treatments. And that was a victory in its own own right. I didn't have a, a website. I didn't have uh, a name or anything. We just called it the mask, the nutrient dense mask. And uh, her clients, uh, her name is Mary, uh, loved it. And so I knew I had something. And then after that, I did, uh, months later, I did a podcast with Dave Asprey. And same thing, I'm, like I'm just talking to you, telling my story about how I recovered and, and how I use skincare to, to um, accelerate my, my uh, healing and my injuries, scarring and things like that. And, and he, he partnered up with me on Alitura. We got a website going. He took it on his Bulletproof site, and uh, the rest is history. I mean, it, we have a full line of products now, uh, two different sizes of moisturizer, a shaving serum, a night cream, a supplement, uh, body lotions coming out, facial cleanser, and a fragrance. I mean, it's just I'm, I'm making my dream products based with, with one uh, mission, and that's just to, to go above and beyond with my ingredients. I mean, I am absolutely – 
um, obsessed with this. I mean, there, there is a way to stand out. It costs me more. Uh, our margins are lower because of that. But I don't, I mean, I'm making products. I'm making my dream products. It's a total creative outlet for me. And uh, people are reaping the benefits of that. I mean, it's just, we're at, yeah, 73 countries now. We have close to 800 cumulative reviews on Amazon and our on our site, alaternaturals.com. Uh, so at like a 4.9 out of 5 rating. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm a- an absolute perfectionist with my ingredients and, and the products that I make and I just uh in in our our integrity our integrity behind building those products I mean so that's awesome it's so much fun for me thank you I see the passion I see the passion complete in this this interview <laughs> of how you found something you truly love to do and that's that's important to remember here too everybody is when you find something this is what happens this is things miracles happen you create great products you create great services and uh you create a great person and that we have here today with Andy for sure. This is awesome, Andy. I'm really excited that you uh, had the opportunity to come on the show and share with us um, your life story, your product. Thank um, you. How about people uh, trying to get this product? And can they, is there samples out there? Is there a website sure. they can go and? Yeah. So our website is alaturanaturals.com. So that's A L I T U R A N A T U R A L S dot com. And yeah, I'd like to offer you and your audience a 15% discount. So I'm going to get that set up for the okay. show notes. We'll just call it yeah. FMB 15, FMB uh, 15 for, for your followers. And, and by all means, check it out. If you have any questions, it's just me. You know, I started, started this all out of my apartment, I moved everything out of my bedroom and my living room and just started to, to go to work. I mean, I made everything. I started melting down the butters and then getting it professionally formulated now, but it's a, you know, you got to start somewhere and, and uh, I think, you know, business is really, it's, 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 it's going because, you know, we put everything into this. It's all I think about. And it's like you said, you know I mean? It's when you find your purpose and your true passion and, and what, what excites you, it's really tough to sleep. It, I know it sounds cheesy, but it's true. I mean, I didn't really know, you know, 30 years old, I was whatever in the entertainment industry, but I wasn't, I didn't love it. It was like homework for me. The only thing I loved is when I get a role that was really close to my, to me and, and who I am. So that was just kind of fun to play with, but you know, like studying a character that's not really me, which is essentially acting. I never really got a, a thrill from that. I absolutely get a thrill from this. And I, man, I'm just so grateful that I, that I found my, my true passion in life. So that's awesome. Uh, thank you for having yeah. me on. I appreciate no, I appreciate you. Uh, also being patient in the beginning here. I, I was, uh, sick over the weekend and, uh, life was, I'm just coming back to life today. So <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's good. I appreciate my health. Uh, you know, it wasn't quite a car accident where I got ran over, but I was a cold that a friend gave me when I was helping him out. But, um, uh, sacrifices we take right in life. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah I've been doing a lot sauna. of, I don't know if you have a, you know, if you have a sauna around you, yeah, definitely. 50 milligram niacin, bring those toxins to the surface, stay in the sauna, stay get, hydrated. Yeah. Get them on out. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Out. All right, Andy, thank you for coming on the show here, the five minute bark. Um, I'm sure we'll be in connection after this and talk more about this, but listeners out there, this is a guy behind, he's got passion behind his product. And if you're looking to get a better skin care, this is it right here. I mean, this is, this is a guy, give him a try. I mean, there's so many of them out there, of course, but this guy's give you his reason. He gave you his um, ingredients. He's given you the fact that he's uh, done t- taken it on himself. He didn't go out and subcontract this out to somebody else. He literally did the work himself on himself, and that makes a difference too. So if anything, you'd be sort of supporting an American here, right? That's right. <laughs> nah, thank you so much. Awesome. Yep, that's right. Made in the USA. That's right. Awesome. We'll talk to you guys soon. You're watching the 5-Minute Bark Podcast on YouTube. If you like this episode, you just may like many more. Subscribe today by clicking the red subscribe button in the top right-hand corner.